Today in the crypto space, we see the market nice and green, Bitcoin getting that nice bounce to the upside. However, Ethereum and the rest of the altcoins are looking really green, really, really bullish. Ethereum up approximately 7.5% and the rest of the crypto space following Ethereum's lead. In today's video, I want to talk about the general market. I want to use Bitcoin as a leading indicator, but more importantly, I want to talk about one altcoin, one project that has been looking pretty good in the last little while and it could be looking for a breakout and that project is called Rio, Realio. So you know what? But let's talk about the news, let's analyze the charts, and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and like it's, let's get right into it. Guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the altcoins looking for opportunities, whether we go up or down, bearish or bullish, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is stay one step ahead of the market so that we can capitalize on any of the volatility. And if you appreciate the strategy, subscribe to the channel, click that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, including the live streams at 7.30 Eastern, where we talk about crypto news and price action. Guys, if you have any projects you want me to cover here on the channel feel free to let me know in the comment section below hit me up on the socials the links are in the description better yet guys join the discord the discord is where it's at lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals and learning material all right guys let's see what's going on here of course the bullish bullish news that we have is that bitcoin is now an approved etf essentially bitcoin is legitimized here we are bitcoin getting a nice bounce and getting a bit of a rejection right around this forty six thousand, forty seven thousand dollar level guys I, I anticipated a bit of volatility and we're still seeing volatility we also anticipated that as we opened the trading day that we would see bitcoin maybe get a bit of volume it did get some volume it did 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 but it also got a bit a bit of a rejection in the last little while so ultimately i do i still feel that the thesis behind bitcoin etf news is all priced in i still honestly feel that bitcoin is already um in a state of potential distribution i'm always i'm already feeling that ultimately if bitcoin is going to benefit from that etf we're going to have to wait for a bit of a pullback market wide and then individuals will start deploying capital into bitcoin once again it's all about sentiment right now bitcoin is a 200 from its bottom and we can't deny the fact that bitcoin is still a very bullish asset however guys in the short term you know we're expecting a bit of a dip now ebb and flows in the market peaks and valleys do exist and heavyweights in the market whales uh traditional uh ta and you know people that are investing in the cryptocurrencies and investing in all kinds of different assets know never to buy into the green and bitcoin has been definitely been green for too long without a decent retracement so ultimately bitcoin in my opinion is um i'm in a no trade zone with regard to bitcoin ethereum on the other hand i was in a in a, in, in a zone where i'm expecting ethereum to hit about 3k maybe even as high as about 35 but i'm still holding pretty strong that if we get to about 3k on ethereum i'm going to start to get defensive on those gains and i'm going to be looking to take profits and deploy them into lower cap altcoins guys here on the channel we like looking for those lower cap altcoins why because they give you the opportunity um, to make those life-changing gains ultimately that's what we're here for to trade our way to financial freedom let's continue going down we see a lot of these altcoins, layer ones, large caps doing pretty good today, a nice bounce to the upside. The ETF did well for the market. It gave us the green light, gave us a signal. But Ethereum running, Ethereum showing strength gives us a better signal. And you know, I've been talking about this altcoin season in the last little while. I've been talking about the Bitcoin do dominance and for the last little while, try to get one step ahead of this market. And I'm glad we did because ultimately Ethereum now getting showing a bit of strength is the signal that I've been looking for, is the signal for that all coin season. It could be the catalyst for an all coin season. We can start seeing all coins run based on the fact that Ethereum is showing strength. And it's statistically speaking and historically speaking, every time we saw Bitcoin run, then an Ethereum run, we have saw a lot of the money rotate right back into the lower cap all coins and that's what i'm expecting in the immediate short term particularly if we do see the bitcoin dominance fall tonight at 7 30 eastern when we talk about crypto news and price action we'll take a look at that bitcoin dominance we'll take a look at ethereum in a bit more detail but of course if you have any requests if you have any projects you want me to cover that is a great time and place to make those requests live all right guys let's continue avax getting a nice bounce to the upside polka dot everything's looking pretty good we have bitcoin cash of course running up we have litecoin showing some strength alongside uh bitcoin and ethereum the the heavyweight 
Litecoin fork of, of, of Bitcoin, of course. Uh, Ethereum, a fork of Ethereum looking strong, a near protocol. Okay, got a nice bounce to the upside. Maybe a short term rejection, possible, possible. Optimism, you know, kind of going sideways, maybe getting a bull flag for continuation to the upside. Part of that Ethereum narrative should do well. Arbitrum as well, doing fairly well and should continue doing well as long as Ethereum starts showing or continues to show strength. Injective going sideways. What else do we have? Immutable X, IMX up 13%. Arbitrum another 12%. So looking pretty good. H bar, some bullish news out of the H bar camp. I don't know how, how, how um, it's actually going to play out, but H bar and Algorand are teaming up for some sort of, um, you know, um, partnership and it should be a good one so i'm going to do some research on that one if you know anything about it feel free to share uh, in the description in the comment section below or even better join that discord and you know let's have that conversation because ultimately bullish news is great for the market caspa eight and a half percent to the upside uh mantle mnt 14 percent. so you see there's green across the board guys there's definitely a, 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 a green uh, some green price action here the question is are we making higher highs are we changing structure to the upside you see quant showing a bit of strength here you see the graph showing a bit of strength with that nice rounded bottom nice and complex at the bottom of the range inverse head and shoulders looking pretty good algorand the same thing nice complex pattern at the bottom and you can see that we have a bit of repetition here you know with these complex patterns rounding off potentially getting a nice bounce to the upside render looking pretty good as well even though render is not one of the top gainers if you look at the price action it looks looking pretty decent um and so far you see the the cookie cutter type of stamp here where all these projects are looking very similar mina protocol nice 17 percent bounce to the upside flow a lot of good stuff here sui 45 percent run guys if you're into sui congrats because that's a good good gainer for today and a lot of others are doing deep in the green bonk nice meme coin running tazels tazels is waking up out of nowhere tazels in my opinion is not a project that i'm focusing on significantly here it's one of the older projects that have been around you know here and there for a, a good while it's not a project that i'm totally fond of but nonetheless it's still moving so pretty good stuff there for a 20 percent run today um aster what else do we have we have pancake swap 10 percent still within range and that's something that you got to identify guys the range as long as we are you know somewhat within range uh, we could still be in an accumulation phase for a nice breakout to the upside to see these altcoins run so any dips at this moment should be with the mindset that we are potentially getting into altcoin season and i'm going to try to build that thesis over time and we're going to do that tonight live at 7 30 eastern all right guys um let's get right into the charts guys i know you're here to talk about price action today is video is all about rio but i want to take a look at bitcoin first and then we'll talk about rio bitcoin of course is in that zone that i'm not interested in is lots of volatility could come into this level lots of fake out liquidity grabs and you can see in the last little while the whipsaw price action has been real and a lot of people that went long a lot of people that went short got wrecked in this level so for me it's a not a, an option to trade volatility that there's so much uncertainty i try to get confluence from the charts and build that confidence over time to get into positions right now is not that time let's look at this in a little bit more detail uh bitcoin again daily momentum still in that bearish divergent state let's look at this in a little bit more you can see that we're making slightly higher highs of course we're making those higher highs but the momentum guys the momentum on the daily is still making those lower highs so lower highs higher highs on the price price action lower highs on the rsi just tells me that that class a bearish divergence is still here and it's not going away just just yet so with that being said i'm not really interested in getting to fresh longs given the fact that resistance could be right here around the corner and and my opinion is i'd rather get into uh risk where um, i'm buying the bottom with good risk to reward ratio opportunities we do have the macd looking okay ema cross to the upside gr green histogram bars up but like i mentioned in the past sometimes we have to keep an eye on the histogram bars and the fact that they're making a bit of a trend we can now tighten this up a little bit and we can get rid of this thing because it's just messing things up we get rid of that and you can see ultimately we can come up a little bit higher and potentially touch the trend line and respect the trend and to, to the point that we can get back into the bearish control zone if we add another trend line down here you can see that it's very viable this channel that we see here and it's possible that we start getting these emas into the bearish control zone where we see a bit of a dip um you know in the short term and guys ultimately seeing bitcoin dip is absolutely healthy i know a lot of people don't want to hear this there's a lot of crypto bitcoin bulls out there 
but ultimately when bitcoin has been rallying for so long so hard it for a healthy retracement it's absolutely healthy and of course it's going to give that opportunity for us to scale into some projects on the cheap especially those altcoins if we get fire sale opportunities we'll be ready to deploy capital at lower levels so that's what we see here and the rsi of course divergent macd divergent and overall this price action hitting a bit of resistance at this level with a, a prime level for a, a, print, a potential distribution phase i'm not interested all right not interested let's move on guys obviously if you have any questions or you want to discuss this further tonight live is the place and time to do that let's take a look at rio the project for today all right guys let's take our time here because honestly i think this might be an opportunity either because it's it, there's volatility around the corner the question is do we go up or do we go down and again it's a game of probability statistically speaking what i like here is that we got a bit of support let's get rid of the indicators for a second and look at just pure price action you can see that we got a bit of support right here horizontally horizontal support based on this volume gap we fell right through it just a little bit and you can see that we filled it up just a little bit as well filled up the volume gap this was the empty space that I, I, i've been identifying because ultimately i look for weakness in the charts and then ultimately i look for opportunity i don't know what this green arrow went rogue it was definitely over here the bottom of the volume gap if you follow my strategy the top and the bottom of the volume gap are are the best opportunities because that's where essentially that's where the liquidity is that's where you're going to have levels that need to be protected by both bears and bulls depending on the direction that you're going and ultimately we came down we got a bit of uh, support at this level nice v recovery to the upside but of course we didn't make a higher high in fact we made a lower high and again red arrow red arrow you know all these levels are scenarios where you should be considering to de-risk so we're in a de-risking scenario nice rally from our entries down here guys remember our entries back test entry double bottom entry tons of entry opportunities here on realio however guys if you're on the sidelines i know we're waiting for retracements and we're potentially in that zone we got to identify the absolute weak scenario the absolute bearish weak scenario is that we come down to the majority of the supply and demand the majority of the support to be said is at about 25 cents 26 cents right at this green arrow right here this is the majority of the accumulation this is where you have the majority of the individuals holding really really strong bags with great entries these guys are in some significant gains definitely holding steady here not selling at the current moment right why because their hands are not being tested there's not enough of a dip now could we come down to a significant level to shake these people out and get to hunt the liquidity at this level it's possible but the probability in this current state is very unlikely it's all about probability because we've got levels to break below before we actually get to this level point of control is down here of course we got to identify the fact that there's some strength in this level the majority of the supply and demand is down here with the point of control at about 20 cents okay this is a very important zone now what now when we start looking at this volume gap the volume gap is still here there's no real real reason to consider that this is not gonna hold up a support going forward we could definitely come right back down you know snag the top of the volume gap and back test it again and get another bounce to the upside and consolidate right into this level in fact that would be an ideal scenario to build a bullish case right so we're trying to stay one step ahead of the market i think that we're a few days ahead of a potential uh, uh, breakout here but it's good to start coming up with a plan from now because then you can align yourself accordingly what i really do want to identify is the range the range right now is important and i'm not going to put a horizontal um you know what why not why because there's a bit of confluence here with this level this level this red arrow is very confluent now um what i do like is the confluence with the double top it's a double top scenario double top slightly lower high fine we came back down for that back test it's starting to look like a decent pattern right here on the daily now the pattern is actually going to look a lot better on the four hour so what we're going to do for now is we're going to stick in the daily for a second and then i'm going to go down to the four hour and show you how amazing this pattern is at the current moment okay so if you're going to go into a long position, reality is, is that you are looking for a breakout trade. OK, it's not a buy the dip opportunity at the current moment. This was the time to take risk from that buy the dip opportunity. And you could have gone in with a small bag anticipating a back test. This was the back test. And it could be still that we come back for a bigger back test. But the reality is the way this setup is looking, it's looking for a bullish breakout. OK, and we have the 200 daily right here trailing up. It could definitely come up a little bit longer as it consolidates in this zone. We could even get rejected where we are right now. We could definitely get rejected and come down to lower levels and still stay within this range. 
okay? So we got to identify that's a possibility. As long as we are range bound, we're still holding up, not giving any stress to these people that bought down here. These people that bought down here are not stressed out whatsoever at the current moment. So we got to understand the sentiment, of course, of those big holders at the, le at the lower levels. And then what we could identify is the fact that if we invalidate this bullish thesis, we basically need to break below this previous low. So where do you put your stop loss? In my opinion, of course, uh, not financial advice, but a stop loss right underneath this low, even below this green arrow would be a great area to put a stop loss. But your entry right now is way too high. You're going to have to endure a massive, massive dip in order to maintain your position. And what about if we actually break down even further? You're going to have to hold a dip more than 30 35% guys that's a significant dip overall so your entry is not great but you're looking for a breakout so how are you going to play this okay so from an entry perspective it's not the greatest risk to reward is not the greatest okay at the current moment and ultimately what we're looking for is a breakout trade let's do that let's see what's going on here on the four hour you'll see a little bit of a different picture because you start to see the pattern a little bit better and it's on the four hour that you see this you can kind of see it on the daily no doubt and it's beautiful because it's holding up at horizontal support and if we get the momentum out here you can see that we got a bit of support here and there we're in the chop zone still we could get overbought again everything anything is possible i'm going to quickly shift to the daily a second and you can see that we went from overbought now we might be looking for oversold conditions again but it doesn't mean that we can come we can't come up for another impulsive move respect this diagonal on momentum get overbought once again and then ultimately start rolling over with a, a nice bearish divergence we can even get to the extension level up to this level which let me kind of get my fib level swing high to swing low and that is the 1.27 and if we go up a little bit higher we hit that 1.618 extension which is very very possible in a nice bullish run to the upside and then the bulls are going to look at this as a bull flag bullish continuation pattern now even more so back to the four hour guys you can see that this bull flag in fact has a great pattern it's a head and shoulders formation in fact it's a head inverse head and shoulder we have a shoulder we have a head and we have a shoulder and the head is got support at the horizontal support now what i would like to see is a potential divergence right here it would be nice to see divergence right here let me show you what i mean this low and this low to have a bit of divergence i don't see it on the on the four hour you can see that on the four hour it doesn't really exist i'm going to go quickly on the daily and i'm going to do something with this thing because it's in my way on um the we're going to set visibility and you can take it off the daily so you don't see it on the daily and even on the weekly that's fine so um on the actually you know what let me go back to that the daily is actually fine that's where i actually want it to stay is the daily how do i go into settings and then we go to uh this is the wrong one sorry guys um let's see if i can do this again uh settings drop visibility where's visibility okay anyways it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this is the scales i know it's somewhere here uh it's not here in fact okay does it matter maybe it's right here and let's try one more time visibility no that's the actual indicator i don't know where it went i'm gonna have to get into lower time frames but i'm gonna bounce around anymore at the end of the day this is what we're looking at inverse head and shoulders a breakout out of this high and i would like to see a bullish divergence here but we're not getting it usually when i see a inverse head and shoulder i want to see that bullish divergence right from this blow and this low so we can expect that nice follow through and the back test confirmation low and then eventually break the neckline and start breaking structure and and, and start getting to the upside as a continuation pattern Pattern. that's basically what i want to see now if we get to the four hour we can see that we got a bit of a bounce off this level um and this is what i want really wanted to do is keep this on the daily and exclude the four hour but you can see that ultimately this is it this is it this is the back test we came from oversold we went overbought now are we done with this dip and are we actually going to start breaking out and getting overbought again the macd ema cross to the upside green histogram bar is looking still quite bullish but you can see that the momentum is quite consolidating on the rsi and the trend strength on the macd showing that we could get back into the bullish control zone for a nice pop to the upside now how do you mitigate risk as a breakout trader the reality is as a breakout trader you got to wait for the actual breakout and that's an unfortunate thing you got to wait for the breakout but you're almost already there there's no point of taking risk at the current moment because we could get a rejection and come back down to range lows and that's the issue with uh breakout trading number one and breakout trading patterns like inverse head and shoulders so what i would be doing here is this hoping that we break out and hoping that we get a nice back test as confirmation i would be getting in a little bit in this at this level 
okay? I would be getting a little bit more right here on the back test. Wherever it is, wherever we see lower term time frames, momentum shift to the downside and get an oversold, okay? And that's what I would do. So I'm gonna go back to the daily, paint this picture. Then we get a nice bounce to the upside and I would be getting in on the break of the previous high. So let's say right around here. So three DCA levels. And ultimately what you're trying to do is create an overall uh, position all into this level that when it gets the continuation, you got one, two, three confirmations of a continuation to the upside. And that way you can mitigate your risk by putting a stop loss clearly right back into the range. So if we come back right into this range and get into this consolidation zone, you might say, you know what, I'm going to cut my losses maybe at about 75 cents. That would be good because ultimately you're coming back down, back into range and range loans it is. Maybe this was a fake out. Maybe this was a liquidity grab, and that's that's what that's basically what you're trying to prevent is get those extra little confirmations that we're making a higher high and higher high, higher lows over time, and eventually hitting some good extension levels, hitting the one dollar mark, hitting the one point six one eight extension level at a dollar five, and and so on and so forth. That's where I would start getting defensive on this trade, whether it be taking a bit of profits, but for sure trailing up that stop loss into some decent gains so that I can mitigate risk, so I don't have to give my gains back into the market. That's essentially Essentially what I would be doing here on this trade setup it looks pretty pretty good but you gotta admit you know when you start seeing consolidations like this this is the time to understand that you can put a, a strategy into play that you uh, mitigate your risk by putting stop losses and ultimately can get in for a bullish run for a continuation to the upside now if we break below this low and we start making lower lows the next green arrow is all the way down here and you can see that we have a bit of instability around this level with the lack of supply and demand that we can come back down to about 25 cents that's a huge dip so you got to figure out where you're going to put that stop loss and of course stop losses help you mitigate risk as well guys if i've offered you any value in this video do the channel a massive massive favor and slap that like button it does really help out with the algorithm join me live tonight at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action of course guys join that discord the discord is where it's at lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals and learning material take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip